Hello everyone. Today I am solving missing coin sum problem. Suppose we have two coins of one rupees, one coin of two rupees, and one coin of three rupees. Then what is the minimum amount which cannot be formed by using the subset of these coins? Well, let us see that. I can definitely pay one unit by using one coin of one unit. I can definitely pay two also because I have this unit as well. Three can also be paid. Now if I look at four. Then four can definitely be paid by using one coin of three and one coin of one. And if I look at five, then it is also possible to pay by using one coin of three and one coin of two. Six can also be paid by using three, two, and one. And seven can be paid as well by using all the coins that we have. So the minimum amount that cannot be paid is eight. Suppose we have another coin of value twenty. In that case, still the answer would have been eight because it is the minimum amount that cannot be paid by using these coins. So I hope you understood the problem statement, and now let us see how we can solve this problem. Well, in the question we have an array, and this array has n integers. That is the length of the array. Now every integer in the array actually represents the value of a particular coin. That is, we have one coin of unit two. One coin of unit four, one coin of nine, and so on, and finally two coins of unit twenty. So we will start by sorting the array in ascending order, and in this case, the array I have taken is already sorted. The reason we are sorting the array is because we want to find the minimum positive number that cannot be created using the given array. So I'll be assuming that initially my answer is one. Then I'll iterate over the elements of the array. I'll start from one, and I see that one is present in the given array, and therefore I'll assume that my answer could be two, and therefore I'll move forward to see that two is also present in the given array, and therefore this cannot be the answer as well, and so on. Therefore, it is best to sort the given array in ascending order. Now let us look at the algorithm to solve this question. Initially, I assign answer with one, and if answer is less than the current element, then it means that my assumed answer is correct. Because there is no chance of getting this number in the right side of the array as well. Now you may ask, why is it also not possible to get whatever integer we choose as our answer in the left side of the array or by some subset of the integers from the left? You will see this in a second. The second case states that if answer is greater than or equal to the current element, then in answer we simply add current element. Now what does this mean? Well, let us see. Suppose currently I have answer as one, and I see that one is already present in the array, and therefore one cannot be the answer. So as per this condition, I increase the value of answer by current element, which is one in this case. Therefore, answer becomes one plus one, which is equal to two. We move forward in the array, and now we see that we have two also present in the given array. Now, as I told that we are increasing the values by current element and not by one, therefore we will increase this by current number, which is two, and therefore our answer will become four. Now you may ask why we are not increasing the value by one and by the current element. Well, then suppose that we increase the answer by one, therefore it became three, and now from three, if I subtracted the current element, which is two, then we will be left with one, and we are very sure. That one can be formed using the array before even using this element. That is from this part of the array, and hence I am sure that plus one is not an option. Therefore, I'll add the current element, and therefore I'll make it four. Again, I move forward in the array, and now I see that we have four, which is equal to our predicted answer. Therefore, I increase the value of our chosen answer by four, that is by current element, and it becomes eight. Now again, let us see why we didn't choose one, two, or three to increment rather than four. Suppose if I had four plus one equals to five, we use the same logic that if we subtract current element from five, which is four, then we will be left with one. And we know that using these elements, it is definitely possible to form one. Similarly, if we have chosen two to make the current element six. In that case, also, if I subtract the current element, which is four, I'll be left with only two, and I have already checked that two is something which can be formed using this part of the array. So what this basically means is that if we choose any number 
which is less than the current chosen number then that number can be formed by the elements of the array which we have encountered previously and this is the reason why i am incrementing the answer by current element and not by any other element which is less than current element therefore as per our algorithm we increase the value of answer by 4 and we get 8 again we move to the next element and we see that now we have an element which is greater than our chosen answer which is 8 and therefore our answer is finally 8 so this is the logic to solve this question and now it's time to code the solution so now let us code the solution so here we have my input and i am taking five coins and these are the values of the coins and this is my initial code which is firstly taking n as the input that is how many coins are there and then taking value of each coin and storing them in a vector then i sorted the array and finally i am assuming that currently my answer is 1 now i need to iterate over all the elements of vector and if answer is less than current element which is v of i then i break otherwise i'll increase the value of answer by v of i finally i print the answer and yes that's it now let us run the code and as you can see the answer is 6 now as we are sorting the array the time complexity of sorting is order of n log n where n is the number of elements and then we are looping over the elements of the array which has the time complexity of order of n so this is the total time complexity but as this is greater than this therefore this is generally not considered and we are left with this time complexity so i hope you understood the solution and now i'll see you in the next video thank you